All right. So we can get started. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us and spending your valuable time with us. We are going to talk about whiteboard.chat. This is the advanced features webinar. So we'll be focusing on some of the advanced features. Uh, we do have a basic features webinar um, that will be coming up soon or on our YouTube channel. At any time, if you have questions, please type them on the chat, on the Zoom chat. And then um, one of my colleagues will read them out to me. And we will also post the recording of the webinar online. We also give PD certificate. So if you want a PD certificate for attending the webinar today, please email us at feedback at whiteboard.chat. Maybe uh, Sid, if you can put it on the uh, chat as well so people have the email address. All right. Okay. Thank you for coming. So I mean, just quickly show you a couple of uh, slides. What is the agenda today? We are going to show you a demonstration of all the advanced features. We'll invite you to experience it live with us, mainly in group board settings this time. Right. So, and then we can do question and answers anytime that you have them. Uh, there are some other cool things features have built with whiteboard.chat. There's a group game with uh, widgets, like the uh, like the spinner, right? And they play these group games in their classes. There's also other group games that with escape rooms that teachers have built in. I will quickly show you how to build some of these advanced features as well. How do you build an escape room? Uh, with whiteboard.chat too. And again, uh, whiteboard.chat was built completely on suggestions we received from teachers. So please keep sending us a suggestions. Um, join our Facebook group. If you are on Facebook, there's a big community of teachers who use whiteboard.chat who interact with us and with each other. So please subscribe to, um, please join that group. You can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter. We have a YouTube channel where we will post this video and any other videos that we make. And I think Tawal has posted links onto the Zoom chat if you want to look at that. So uh, whiteboard.chat is a web-based, uh, a browser-based tool. So you can just use a browser, go to whiteboard.chat, uh, we have our privacy and terms of conditions on the bottom left. Uh, there's also a little video here with some information on the top. <clears throat> but if you click on start drawing, it operates, whiteboard.chat operates in two modes. One is more for adults where it's the collaboration mode where everybody ends up on the same board, but you can collaborate with each other, but you can clobber each other's work as well, right? You can delete other stuff. There's no um, instructor and learner separation there. The teaching mode is more interesting for teachers where you can create, assign, and live teach individual student or group boards, right? You can upload your PDFs, you can generate workbooks, you can um, make groups, all of that, but you still have administrative control over the classroom. So that's the part we are going to primarily focus on today, the teaching mode. Yep. So you click that, you get into teaching mode. Most teachers, first thing they do is give this a name. So we can call it webinar September 30th. Right? That's how you get started by clicking on the top. So this is the name of your board. right? And then on the left-hand side is your main uh, main navigation of the tools, right? So if you click this little button here, it opens it up. If you use one tool, there are plenty of tools in here. So for example, if, you, if I like to draw shapes and again and again, I like circles, I can just click this little heart next to it. So what that does is it puts it on the top of my menu. So I don't need to go deep, right? I can just use it right from there. Um, and the my favorite tools, become really accessible to me as well, right? So that's one thing that uh, is quite interesting. 
you can upload content. So there's this upload button. He has a dog or a cat. He looks like he has a monkey. So you can upload content from here. I'll show you an advanced features with upload as well. So you can upload files from your computer, from your Google Drive, right? All of that pretty easily. You can upload from a live worksheet uh, as well. So if you go to, I'll show you this one. So if I go to live worksheets, for example, .com, I like some worksheet, for example. Yeah, I like this one, for example. I can just copy this URL from the top, paste it here. Right, and then the worksheet comes in here automatically. So you can start using it immediately for your lesson, right? Uh, you can have students start using it. So it's super easy to import stuff into whiteboard.chat using the live worksheets link. You can also use a new thing that we recently added. So this is a multi-page worksheet. You can see it actually created two pages. You can also upload content using the phone scanner, which is quite convenient. So what you do is open the phone scanner, right? Uh, so you can turn your phone into a scanner. If you have a phone, just scan the QR code with your phone. So I'm going to do that, my phone, for example, right? And then what that does is that you can, you choose the upload picture option, right? And then I can take a picture of anything uh, like a, uh, that I'm doing with a paper and pencil, right? Um, and then click upload from the phone. And that's super easy. You can scan multiple pages. You can see that it comes up here uh, and something that I was writing and you can correct it, you can change it. Students can upload it as well using the phone scanner. So that's also super convenient. So there are multiple ways to upload content onto whiteboard.chat, right? And then you can invite students. So inviting students is straightforward too. You click this invite button on the top, right? Okay. You can invite the students directly into Google Classroom or in from Teams. Or you can send them this link, right? For, um, what most teachers do is put this link in LMS. So I'm going to share it with Sid on Slack, right? And then uh, you can start becoming a student. I'll do the same with uh, Tawal as well. So I shared the links with them and then they can join as students. You can see as soon as they start joining, their icons start to show up here. I can also make a student join on the site. So you'll see the student experience. So when the students join the board for the first time, they'll be asked for a name. They will, uh, that can be identified to the teacher, right? So you can just call it student one, for example. And then the left-hand side, it's a teacher board, the right hand side is the student board. They get a copy of whatever the teacher was doing, right, as uploaded, and they can start filling in stuff. I put this in easy mode so you can have simpler, but they can start filling in stuff. They can start annotating whatever worksheets you have made, whatever work you have done, right? And as a teacher, you can go into this thing we call the grid view, right? In the grid view, you can actually see all the students as they're working live on this assignment, right? Whatever they're doing, you can watch them, right? And then you can join them one-on-one -on, -one on their boards as well, right? You can join them and say, hey, uh, this kid is doing really well. Let me go into my uh, gizmo section and give them a feedback sticker. You can say, hey, uh, this thing is, you got this, right? You're doing really well. And you can see the student gets the sticker, right? And then you can go back and continue watching the rest of the class. You can also give stickers directly from here. So what you can do is that if you open my Gizmos sheet, for example, and then I want to say 100% to Sid, I just click it here. You can see it puts the sticker on his board. Similarly, if I were to do it for this student, you don't even need to join their board. You can actually see that it puts the sticker on their board where you place it from the grid view. So that is also super convenient. 
Make sure you can actually see. And you can see that these little numbers are starting to appear. These are engagement scores. So if you have uh, one of the paid plans, you can actually see which of the students are engaging right now with the lesson, which ones are not doing stuff with the lesson. You can see Dhawal was doing a really good job. So his engagement scores were high, right? And this student, of course, is not doing anything. So you can see their student scores are getting low. So you can look at the student scores, engagement scores from here as well. Another cool thing that we added is that you can actually label students as well. So you can say, hey, for example, I already attended to this student, which is Sid. I attended to this student, which is Sid. And then you can uh, hide the boards which are which have this label associated with it, right? So you can actually see, okay, I don't need to pay attention to the whole class. I need to pay attention to the certain people who are either have a label or don't have a label, right? So you can actually just pay attention to the or the certain subset of students who are not uh, labeled with the attendant label, right? So that, that makes it super useful where you can condense the number of students you're looking out for. So you can filter it really easily and you can remove the label. If I remove the label, then I can go back to see all the students uh, really easily. And the students don't see the label on their side. Only the uh, teachers do, so which makes it interesting. You can also search for names here in the grid view. You can search for certain students um, and see only if you want to see only a subset of students and you can comma separate their names as well. So we can say, okay, I want Sid and I want Thawal. Right? It'll just give me two people's boards and then not everybody else, right? So that again, you can search for, if you want to look for a subset of students that you want to look at, at any given time, you can use this uh, little search bar and the labeling thing on top. Okay, um, that's new um any questions so far sir no no questions okay all right uh, let me continue uh, so i think the rest of that stuff uh like you can of course upload files for from google drive directly now you can even upload uh presentations google uh, presentations directly from um, um, from uh, Google Drive, which is quite interesting. Right. Any other Google Doc formats you can upload directly here. Can you upload from Dropbox to Box Uh No, not right now. We don't have it. That's something that is interesting. We can look into it. Okay, and then uh, the other thing is, yeah, so we'll, so there about, are some- How about uploading from OneDrive? Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, no. Only thing you can do right now is Google. Uh, we can add OneDrive for sure, because we have partnership with uh, Microsoft, we should be doing that. So let me show you one more feature uh, where this is the, this is quite popular, where if you, if you're, looking at somebody's work uh, later on after they are done with it, you can use this time machine feature. So if you go to the settings, you can take out this time machine feature and you can look at anybody's work backward and forward in time, right? As they were progressing through the lesson, you can see what were they doing, right? And how they were behaving, right? You can see which parts they were struggling on, how much time did they spend on each of these things, right? So that's useful as well to see where the students were actually working, uh, spending their time on, right? So it's pretty easy. You can do that on any board, go back and see uh, from time machine where the things were uh, at a certain point of time. Oh, oh yeah, one more thing we recently added, and I'll show you that too. So we, we had uh, for math teachers, we had a coordinate plane Right? So you can use a coordinate plane. Now we added the, one of the math teachers wanted the ability to change the maximum and minimum um, accesses right? for each of them. You can create, a, create something like, right? like that, where 
you can define your own axes and it'll put it nicely for you and then you can use the grid painter to put in dots or you can have uh, you can define your own axis easily at that point. So that's also useful. Uh, what else? I think that's it from this side. One more thing we recently added is the ability for the teachers to see which mode you're on. So on the top right here, you can see that you're in the move resize too, right? And that makes it useful. So if you change their mode, you'll always know which mode you're on. Uh, the students can do that too, of course. They'll see it on their screens too. Uh, so now I'll show you a couple of more things. In the avatar menu, you can create chat, right? So uh, you can create a chat function. So if I say create chat, it creates a one-to-many chat. So basically the students can talk uh, only to the teacher. And the, but the teacher, whatever they say, is broadcast to everybody by default. The student teacher can also choose to chat one on one with a student or a small subset of the students. For example, if they are on a student's board, they will only by default chat with the local student on the board they are on. But you can see uh, who they are chatting with, right? And the good thing about this chat is that for people who are learning a different language, they can turn on translations. So they can say, hey, I don't understand uh, English, for example, I want to learn in a, a chat in a different language. So the recipient can pick the language that they're comfortable with, right? And when the teachers chat, uh, send a message, it automatically live translates it to their language and vice versa. So the teacher can pick a language and when the students type it, will put it back in their language. So that's also super useful if you're teaching kids with a different language. We have speech to text built in as well. The speech to text also translates in different languages. So uh, to enable speech to text, you just need to go here. You can say, uh, oh, I should show you dark mode also. I'll show you that later. You can say, enable speech to text, right? And then you can, uh, it, Anytime that you use the text mode, it will have a way to translate from, uh, first of all, do speech to text, but also translate to a different language if you're not comfortable with uh, the same language. So I can, for example, if I speak in Hindi and say, it, ask it to translate to English, right? and then I can just click this and say, Mera naam Pavan hai. So you see that it not only recognized what I said in Hindi, but it actually translated that into English as well. So that's again, super useful for uh, interacting with students who don't speak the same language as you. Uh, that's becoming more and more common with global uh, reach of the internet now. Uh, what else? So I'll also show you uh, group boards. I think that's one of the most interesting things um, people can have the kids collaborate with. So what I can do is that I can create, for example, a group uh, activity. So let's say I create, a, and this is a new thing that we added in the tile factory. So if I go to widgets, I go to the tile factory. Right, you can make guessing tiles, right? So you can say, um, um, right, you can say, hey, I want students to uh, guess something, right? And then it'll make a, um, oops, I should have put a number. Well, let me clear that, put it again. Open. Let me do that again. So I go to the tile factory and say make guessing tiles. If you can say, right, and then if we want 
to give some hints, we put quotes around them. Right? And this is, this is like hangman. I know you're not supposed to say hangman, but essentially that's what it is. So uh, students can play as individuals or they can play in a group. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to invite Sid Dhawal uh, and the student to become a part of the group. The way I create the group is go to the participant panel, right? You can say, uh, create group board. There are three ways to create groups. The easiest is to auto create groups or you can select a certain subset of students. So if I select Sid, Dhawal and the student, right, these three people, move them over to the right, right? They become part of the chosen ones. And you can say, this is group one. Right. And then you just hit get create group. It'll, you'll see that they are automatically transferred over to the group board. Right now they can interact with each other. So if they, let's say all of them go to page number five, right? Uh, you can see, you can see say this here. And if I were to draw something or they are drawing something, you can see that uh, you can, the kids can interact with each other, they can play the game also that I just put in, right? And if I select a wrong answer, oops, you can see I lose a bear, right? So <laughs> and it's fun. As a teacher, you can actually watch them in the grid view as well, or you can join them on the group board as well, right? And you can actually see as a teacher who did what. So if I were to go to page number five, for example, you saw that they finished the work. You can see, oh, this was updated by student Sid, right? And then you, you can know who wrote what. And as students, students cannot erase each other's work. They can erase, for example, this guy was only writing in pink, but he cannot erase the other people's work, right? And you can see that they can only erase their own work. They can only move their own work. So there's still a lot of control as teachers, even in a group setting, uh, and there's a lot, lot less disruption to the class because you have more control as to who's doing what. So it's super easy to do group, group activities. I will share a board with you in a second uh, where you can play the same game with me as well. So is there any questions, Sid? Uh, yeah, there's one question about fonts. Uh, the teacher would like to add uh, IPA fonts for phonetic transcri transcriptions. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, if you can give us an example, we can easily add it. Um, so we have some fonts in here that teachers have requested, but we can add IPA fonts as well. So if you give us, uh, uh, maybe we can write it down for that. And we, we look at it and we if you have a preference of a, font that you would want, we can easily add it. So we have some fonts here. We have like the regular um, fonts. We have some helper, KG helper text with, uh, we have uh, some open dialects, you know, Sassoon, Comic Sans. So some fonts here, but of course we can keep adding more and more here. So. And there's some uh, requests to demonstrate locking of boards and uh, dark mode. Right? Sure. So, uh, so yeah, uh, the locking of board is pretty straightforward. So if you have, for example, there are two ways, three ways you can lock board. <laughs> so one is to lock the whole class. So you can go here and lock class to the avatar menu. What that does is that now none of the students can do anything on their board. Nobody can write, nobody can do anything, right? Uh, so it just locks the class completely, right? The other way to lock the class, a single page. So for example, if you are doing a teacher paced activity where you have follow teacher turned on, you can lock a particular page. Okay, you're done. Everybody's done with page two. You lock that page and nobody can edit that page anymore. Right? And they have to keep going to the next one. You can also unlock an individual student's work. So if you go to this action, for example, you can open, uh, you go to this open class boards and let's say some 
kid is not following directions or they're being disruptive, you can actually just go there uh, to this three dots menu here and lock their particular board, right? So only that student's board is locked, right? Then, uh, well, now they're in the group board, but if I were, let me put that back to the regular board. You can see that now only that student's board is locked. Right? So everybody else can continue working, only that student's work is locked. Right? And then if you go on to unlock it, you go back to the same place and you can say unlock mode. And then they can continue working on their lesson as well. But the students cannot see each other's work anytime uh, unless they're in a group work setting. Um, they cannot work on, um, they cannot disrupt each other anyway, right? But even otherwise, you can lock individual students. One other interesting thing is that if, again, if you have a paid plan, if you turn on premium audio video or inline audio video calling, what you can, when you create groups, it automatically creates the breakout group as well. So then the students will get their own channel in the group board to talk to each other. And that's used quite a bit by teachers because that's a super easy way to have two or three students collaborate and they have their own audio video channel that you can monitor as a teacher as well, but they can actually be made part of very, very easily. What uh, you wanted to see the dark mode as well, sir? Yes. Yeah, so the dark mode is pretty straightforward. Go to the setting, we recently added it. So it makes, uh, yeah, there you go, right? So it makes, it look, you just turn it on. Remember to turn it on before you add content because the colors are now you, you reversed really. So you have to pick more vibrant colors to work in dark mode, but it looks really, really nice. I mostly use dark mode now. <laughs> uh, another question, Con, can you uh, add blank pages in real time while you are in follow teacher mode? Uh, yes, you can add blank pages uh, at any time. Yeah, so that's right. So if I turn on follow teacher mode, for example, right now it's six, page number six, everybody's on page number six. If I go back to page number five, uh, everybody is going to go back to page number five, right? And then so forth, right? So this guy is on page number five, and this guy is on page six. And then if I add page seven, for example, right? Uh, Right. And then you can see that, yeah, you can keep adding pages even in follow teacher work. Any other questions? Sir? No questions. Okay, so I'm going to turn off dark mode for now because of the. Uh... Oh, there's actually uh, another question. Uh, can I add pages in the middle, some like between three and four? You can, uh, I have heard people have uh, mixed opinions about it. I'll show you how to do it, but uh, I would recommend making a copy of your board before you do that. So what you do is you can see, go to the thumbnail view. You can move pages around from here. So for example, if this page number five, I wanted to make page number three, I can move it up, right? So it'll change the page number three to the, wait for it to refresh, that's important. Uh, so you can see it added page number three. Now you can say go, if you right click this guy, right, any of the pages, you can say insert page. Again, you have to wait for a second for it to do its thing. And you see that it added a new page number four in the middle. So you can add pages in the middle, but uh, I recommend making a copy um, before you do that. So just click here and say save copy. So you have another copy that you can work with. Any other questions? No. Uh, actually, there is one more one. Uh, are all the features available in Asia as well? Yeah, yeah. Our, so everything that when we show all our properties, Asia, US West, and whiteboard.chat, all of them uh, have exactly the same features. Uh, they're identical. And we, whenever we do a change, which is almost daily, we do it in all three places as well. 
Okay, so um, maybe what we can do is that uh, yes, we can show you some more of the widgets. Yeah, so uh, there is this another thing that teachers asked for, which is quite interesting, is this screen shade feature. So if you're using it, for example, even in a live classroom and you want to hide from the students, what the answer is, you can put in the screen shade. Right, and then you can slowly, uh, as a teacher, you can slowly expose the answers if you want to, right? And then the students will get to see it. So this is useful even in a live class setting, right? Where you're projecting your laptop or uh, computer onto the screen, you can actually show them and slowly, slowly release the answer as, as you're doing it. You can also, there's pointers built in here as well. So there's a, uh, snake pointer which i like basically if you want to highlight a certain section you can say okay look, pay attention to this part and you can see the snake on the right hand side also right? it's on the same place or there's a more traditional spotlight that you can use as well so you can just use to highlight a certain section if you want that's useful too uh, another thing that we recently added is the uh, same with the um phone scanner mode uh, if i go to back to my camera i scan this page i open. so what what you can when you're doing the phone scanner mode you, instead of using it as a phone scanner you can set it to connect as a drawing tablet Right. So what that allows me to do is now I have, I don't have a touch screen, for example, right? Uh, so I can, oops. So I can put in content here directly from my phone, right? You can see I'm doing check marks. It starts to appear here on its own, right? And that's uh, super useful as well. So that becomes uh, interesting for, uh, to use as a, as another device which I can write on really easily. And then you can see on, on my here, on, on the desktop here, if I were to use this, you can see where my phone is placed. And if I move it around the phone screen moves and I can just use the phone screen then to do corrections or write stuff into it as well. Right? So it'll show up exactly where the phone screen is placed. That's super useful. Uh, and you can turn on handwriting recognition, you can turn on magic draw. So uh, uh, I can show you how magic draw works too. That's also pretty cool. So if you are drawing something, it, it becomes uh, quite interesting. All right, so uh, that said, what I'll do is that I'm going to um, place uh, uh, another board onto the uh, chat. So I'm going to show you another way to create group boards uh, with the board that I'm going to pay, pay paste on the chat. So this is the board that I prepared. It has two pages in it. One is this game. Then another one is a puzzle. You can create puzzles out of whiteboard.chat pretty easily as well. Just take any picture, you right click it, you can say make jigsaw and we'll make a puzzle like this, which you can jumble if you want to. And then you can have kids play with it. And then you can make escape rooms out of it too. So I will show you escape rooms also, but let me first invite you guys into this board so you can start playing and I'll show you how I can put people in the, in groups after they have joined. A couple of quick questions, Pawan. One is how do you lock the board so that the students can no longer work after the activity is finished? So yeah, so basically what you do is exactly what I was showing earlier. You click the participants panel. You can go here and say lock the class. And when you lock the class, the students cannot do any changes to the uh, boards anymore. Only the teacher can, but the students can still view them. So if we are doing corrections, they can go back and see uh, what they're doing. Right? So all of that is possible. Yeah, and they can use a timer to lock it if they'd like to do that too. Right, there's a way to set up a timed activity if the students are working even asynchronously, 
right? They can go back to that uh, activity at any time and the timer starts as soon as the student joins. So if you want to give them 10 minutes to do an activity when the student joins, then they'll be uh, given 10 minutes to do that activity and go on. Great. And the question about showcasing boards, uh, is there a way to showcase it without uh, exposing the name of the student? Yeah, so by default, the showcasing is done without the name of the student. So let's say Amy is doing a really good job, right? So you can, you can just showcase her board from here, you click this showcase, and then you can see that everybody's, uh, everybody's board is updated to her board, but you cannot see whose board it is, right? Uh, it won't have a name. So, and then when you're done, you can disable the showcasing and then everybody goes back to their own board. Thanks. All right, so now I'll show you another way to create groups. So uh, instead of having, uh, picking by students, we can have the application pick for us. You can just go back to create group boards. You can say auto create groups. And here I can say, I want three students per group. I just say, I want three students per group and hit the auto create. And that what it will do is that it will create these groups automatically. There were only uh, six of you who had joined the whiteboard. So now you can see that it has created two groups and you should be on one of the two groups, right? And um, you can collaborate with each other. Uh, you can play the same game again, or you can do the puzzle, right? Any which way. Um, it's best to use the move and resize tool to do that. Uh, and you can move step around and play around with it. And as a teacher, you can watch the uh, groups as well if you want to. You can join an individual group if you want to. Uh, if you want to say, hey, I want to join this group, I can see what they're doing. Okay. They haven't gone to page number two. And then if you want to see other group, you can go there too. Hi. Any other questions? No, no other questions. Very cool. All right, so I'll show you how to create one more activity, uh, which is like an escape room where kids have to solve a question before they can go to the next page. That's also quite popular with teachers. Um, so uh, let me go back to my example board. I don't know how uh, to see. Yeah. Sorry, is there a question? No. no. All right, so uh, here on the, so if I go to page number four here, let's say I want to, or let me create a new activity. I create a new board. Right, let's say page number one is this. You say uh, to go to page number two. So if I, and then I go to the page number two, you say this is page number two. Okay. And then if I want to just put a password or to go to page number two, I go to the thumbnail view from here. You right click this guy, you can say toggle password, right? And you can set a password. You can say only, only if you say 10, then you are allowed to go to page number two. And you can see a little lock appears on the page. Now, if I were to invite a student, right, when the student joins this board, so if they try to go to page number two, for example, they'll be asked for a password. And if they enter something wrong, uh, it won't take them to the next page, right? And then if they, of course, if they give the right answer, then they'll be taken to the next page, right? And you can do that not only by passwords, uh, you can actually set up Auto correction to do that as well, which I will quickly show you. Right. So, for example, if I want 
students to say, um, let's do this, can use currencies. So I use the drop zone here. So I can put the drop zone here and say, you can say, oh, so first I have to put the answer here. So I take out currencies, I go to currencies. US currency. I can say I want to make a dollar twenty-five. Of course, you want to enable student loan, enable student loan. And then you can put an instruction there. You say make And then you can, what you do is that, so you can put the dollar there, put the 25 cents there, right? And then you can say, add answers and points. Let's say this is worth five points and say, right? And then it'll take away the answers. It will remember the answers, but it'll say, take it away. And you can give the students the ability to auto-correct it themselves, to check their answers too, if you want to. So you, again, if I go back to, widgets right you can say add link you can say auto correct and say check your answer and that's it right now what happened and then page number three is uh, well, let me create page three you can say you won the escape room and then I just, instead of putting a password, what I say is to go from page two to three, you can actually do toggle password. You can say last page score has to be 100%. Right? Only then you are allowed to go to the last page. Now as students, right now the, as students, they can go in here and then they can say, okay, let me try this. Go to the check answer, it auto corrects. You got the zero score because that's not the right answer. You cannot go to the next page and say your score is too low, at least 100%. Right? And then you can put the quarter there as well. You can see, okay, now I can correct it again. Oh, yeah, I got the right answer. Now I can go to the next page. Right? So you can make a really uh, fun escape room for the kids uh, where you can have different activities on different pages and they can keep going through the pages. And of course you can watch them all live as they're progressing through the lesson, right? And you can see where the students are, who needs help, all of that from here. So that's quite interesting as well. Any questions so far? Uh, no, no additional questions. Huh? All right, I think um, maybe we covered a lot of stuff today. Uh, I don't know if we should keep going. It becomes inundating for people if <laughs> we keep showing features. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot and like, lot of stuff you can do with whiteboard.chat. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna stop the recording, but if you want to discuss with us uh, anything that you would want me to, if you're, uh, if you're curious about how do, would you do that? I'd be happy to discuss uh, on Zoom with you guys.